Ready. Good morning, saints. Good morning. And good morning, sinners. Good morning. Uh, whenever I look, I'm not just looking at, you know, when I say saints and I'm looking that way. No, I'm not saying that you are the saints or that you are the sinners. It's just in general trying to see the landscape of who is here. So here we are, saints and sinners and children of God people who are made in the image of God. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful that no matter where our journeys have taken us, here we are valued, we have worth as people of God. And so I'm glad that you chose to worship with us uh, this morning. Um, and whatever your circumstances, know that you are welcome at our Savior's. My name is David Lagos Fonseca. I am the uh, sole pastor here uh, at, at Our Saviors. And I take this time to, take, to uh, you know, um, extend a very warm welcome to those of you who are here for the first time, um, you are, who, who are visiting with us. Um, and, uh, and here uh, we also uh, greet this morning uh, those who are watching online. So if you look at that camera and say hello, hello everyone, um, they are watching us and um, we welcome you to this time of worship too. We're glad that you can, uh, you know, sit down with a cup of coffee and participate in our worship. Um, we would like you to record your attendance with us, and, and there is an attendance pad on each pew if you can let us know that you are here. But also we have these help us connect with you card. So if you need anything, if you would like to get in touch with you, this is a way to do it. Uh, we'll be happy to, to reach out to you and to minister to you in any needs that you have. And um, because we would love to stay in touch with you and let you know about what is going on, what we are doing as a church, not only here, but uh, in, in the community, what we want to plan. Uh, and I hope also that as we worship together, you will enjoy this time of worship. 
that it will be a time where you can connect with your God and with each other, with this community of faith and love. And we hope that after the service is over, you can stay and, and chat and, and tell us a little bit uh, about you uh, over coffee or tea or lemonade, uh, which we have in the fellowship hall. And uh, today we have a great day in which we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. And we are uh, baptizing Evelyn Grace Dickey, and she is today here with her parents, uh, Kimberly and Kostecki and Brian Douglas Dickey, and their families. And we will have a, a moment later to, to get to know them, and because they will be introduced to all of us. And um, folks, my... Uh, my, my duty here is not just to welcome you, but also uh, to share some brief announcements. And, and those announcements, uh, you will see them on the screens also, is that next week we will uh, celebrate all church birthday part. I mean, we will have an all church birthday party. We will have cakes. And I think we're going to have 12 cakes. Is that correct? 12 cakes. So the, those who were born in January sit at the table of January and have plenty of cake. Imagine if there are two people and you have a big cake, you're going to have plenty to eat or take home with you. That's great. Um, that's going to be on July 16th after the service. Um, also, we have a great opportunity to serve, feed my starving children. We will uh, assemble meals and that is July 14th Friday from 4:30 to 6:15. There are, there are many, uh, you know, um, uh, opportunities to serve, so you can register or talk to Paula Shrey. She's not here, but probably she's watching online. And um, I think that will be it. Oh, and we need lawn mowers needed. Um, we have had rain, and the grass is growing, so we need people who have some free time to uh, mow the grass, mow the lawn, and, because it looks beautiful. And when it looks beautiful, it is also welcoming, you know, to see everything uh, neat and tidy and clean, and it's it just a, a, a sight to, to, to be seen, to, be, to behold. And, um, and so um, I invite you to continue participating and volunteering to help us take care of, of the grounds. All right, and of course, school supplies drive, and it will uh, go to uh, Grove Junior High Children Home and Aid. Uh, we have a box out in the Nardex that is already ready for you to bring any uh, supplies that you have if you would like to cooperate with that. All right. So, I hope you were listening, right? And probably I see some of you are already done listening, so I'm going to shut up here. And, and, but I'm excited for what is coming up uh, here at Our Saviors. And check out our website also. Although I would say that our website, you have seen that it's the same for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Because we are redesigning it. And as we redesign it, we cannot change it. Uh, it's an internal process. And so you will see it, uh, a new developed redesign website pretty soon. But in the meantime, j just the calendar is what is changing. All right? So, I don't know how you arrived this morning, you know, and, and how you are feeling. But today we are going to talk about, um, you know, being worn out or, or uh, worn out or burnout, out, or, you know, or exhausted or tired. Did you sleep well this morning? Have you been sleeping well all these mornings? You know, when you get up, are you rested? Where do you find your rest? Today we come to proclaim that we find our rest in Jesus Christ. And how does that look like? Well, we will talk about it. And so I invite you now to be in the mode of worship 
and sing together this beautiful song that declares our love and commitment to Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus on page 170 on the hymnals and it will be on your screens. Please stand. love you, Lord, and we come before you this morning, and we thank you, Lord, that you have called us your children, and as such, we are gathered here today, children returning home, seeking directions, direction in their lives we've made for ourselves, seeking comfort for our sorrows, seeking identity in a world seemingly gone mad, seeking the wisdom to to make right and nobler choices, seeking to find home where we belong, seeking to f the wisdom to, to know what to do each and every day. And, and we thank you, Lord, for all that. When we can gather today to celebrate the source of our life and our living. It has been a busy week, O oh Lord, for most of us, and our hearts are filled and fluttering with many things, work, business, homemaking, travel, vacations, preparations for vacations, some hard and, and trying moments. So help us now to find the center of everything again, and having found it, to worship you in gladness and truth, realigning our hopes and desires, our plans and passions, our sentiments and our understandings. May your, uh, our voices, may our voices of praise be pleasing to you, O Lord. Through Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Okay, again, good morning. My name is Linda Demore. That's better. Um, and it's now my honor to lead us in our time of uh, presenting our joys and concerns so that we can all pray together. So if you can, raise your hand if you have a joy or concern. The ushers will come around with a mic. Please tell us who you are and then tell us what your joy and concern is so we can all pray together. What joys and concerns do you bring today? Hi, my name is Dana Legg, and uh, a year ago, I was in the Highland Park Parade when the uh, shooting happened. Um, and this year, I did four parades, and uh, it was it was kind of, it was not too bad. You know, I was, did a lot of looking around, but but uh, everything went very smoothly. Uh, there was a huge presence of uh, law enforcement standing around with with um, very large weapons and uh, making sure that everything went smoothly and well I appreciate that while I appreciate that I still think the need for that is our biggest shame and uh, we still have to concentrate on the problem with guns because there's mass shootings every week and it's 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 not abating at all and that's that's a that's a very big concern of mine and if it's a mental problem why do we keep giving guns to people with mental problems thank you uh, i'd like to suggest we keep uh, linda riggs and her father in our prayers uh, her father has several major issues but because of his heart condition, uh, they can't do anything about them, so they will just get worse. And so we need to keep them in our prayers. We need to keep her father because of what he's dealing with. That, uh, you know, his, his end of life is near. And we need to deal with, uh, pray for Linda as she deals with this situation. Hi, Jenny Buton. I'd like prayers for my dear friend sitting here next to me. She's having... Um, hip surgery on Tuesday. So Diane Weaver, keep her in your prayers. Also, I'd like prayers for another good friend, Amy. I taught with her and um, she was at their lake house this weekend and she just took a random fall and broke her ankle on one side and the top of her foot on the other. So she's complete, and she's a young, she's like in her 40s, you know. And um, so she's completely confined to a wheelchair right now. So this has really thrown her and her family for a loop. So please pray for Amy as well. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Al Iverson. I have a joy and a concern about the joy. The joy is that we are having a golf outing this year. Um, I think it's about the 15th, and that's wonderful for our church. But the concern is a couple people mentioned to me, which I didn't realize, that it was Labor Day weekend and they may be out of town. So I need to get some commitments. I've only gotten two foursome commitments because the first week of August I need to make a large payment to about 40% of the cost to the, the uh, golf course, 40% uh, of the cost of the day and the lunch. So please uh, give me a call. Uh, let me know if you have a foursome. You really don't have to get the money to me, maybe the beginning of August, but uh, please, please let me know. Thank you. Uh, my, uh, my name is Amy Meyer, and um, I would like prayers for my mother, Phyllis Minker. Many of you have met her. Um, she has been in hospice since February, and um, she's nearby. And she is telling us that she is ready to go. And um, she has a lot of ups and downs. So just prayers for my mom and our family as we go through this journey. If you were ever in a church where she was an, a member, she was always there at the beginning of every event and there at the end of every event. So um, anyway, prayers for my mom as um, we walk this journey with her. I have a correction to make. The golf outing is September 10th. It's August 15th that I have to make a payment. I'm sorry. 
Hi, I'm Joyce Capura, and Suzanne Clark has asked me to pass on her thank yous to everybody that prayed for her or sent her cards. Her surgery on, uh, this week went very well, and she's at home recovering. And I have actually a, a joy. My parents are here visiting for the summer. They come in for a couple months, so they're here through the middle of September. So Marvin and Evelyn are here this, this week. And, and, or, and then um, I also have a concern, uh, kind of a, I think it's me. Uh, um, uh, there is a lot of hate in, 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 in things in, in the world, and I'm always like shocked on Friday night we have a park behind our house with a nice big hill. It's a sledding hill in the winter, and the kids run and play up there in the summer. And I heard some noise in our park about 8 o'clock, and so I went and looked, and some kids had put a swastika at the top of our hill. It didn't last very long. I think I called the police, and before they got there, the kids had taken it away. But to have such hate in our neighborhood, just I can't tell you how upsetting it was to me um, so I just, I, I, prayers for those kids, prayers for the hate that exists in our world. We, we, we need to find a way to love and accept people. And I just, I just don't, I just don't understand. And like I said, it was just so blatant. Um, I don't know how many other people in the neighborhood saw it, but it was really upsetting to me. And, and I just, I just feel, you know, whatever's going on there. Um, so please pray for those kids and whatever hate exists in our world that we just do not understand. Um, if there's any other joys and concerns? I'm sorry, Kelly. Stecky <laughs> and the Dickey family that's here to witness Evie's baptism this morning. Okay. Oops. Pam. Hi, Pam Ross. I'd just like to ask for prayers for a coworker of my sister. She is a teacher down in Cape Coral, Florida, and she has a fellow teacher who has been diagnosed with gallbladder cancer. That's one of those that you never really get any signs until it's almost too late. She's a wife, she's a mother, she's a grade school teacher. So please keep her in her, your prayers. Clem, behind you. I, I won't debate the action that was taken this week in terms of affirmative action. What I will ask for prayers on is how do we balance and level the playing field? Uh, there are a lot of people that were impacted by it. So the question really becomes how do we level the playing field? How do we ensure we all enjoy the quality of each through education, through a lot of things. So the only thing I ask for prayers on is how do we level the playing field? Are there any other choice? Oops, Alice. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alice McCalla, and I want to say thank you for all the prayers that you sent, the cards that I got, uh, my surgery went well, and now the other leg of my journey continues, but I feel strength from all of you. Thank you so very much. Okay, if you would please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your many, many blessings, the beauty of this day, and all the joys and things that you bring, family being here to visit, the gathering of friends, for baptisms and, and love, and all the joy we find in being with, gathered here to pray and praise you. And Lord, please be in the situations, bring healing to those who need healing, and bring justice and equality and just help us as a country and as a group of people to to find love and caring for each other and to find that the differences are what make us great it really is about loving all of us in all our our unique attributes so lord be with each of us this day and as you taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God has certainly led us to this place to inspire us, to gently redirect us until we see the world as God does and love the world with God's love. So with our gifts, we affirm that God's generosity can make us all into a new creation by the way we give uh, ourselves of, of ourselves. So I invite now the ushers to receive our gifts and offerings. Please stand. Let us pray. We offer not only our gifts, O Lord, but our time, energy, and presence, so we might spend more moments with the lonely. We offer our words, so the voiceless might be healed. We offer our hands, that the hungry might be fed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Now we will in, uh, have a time to enjoy the gift of music that Ricardo brings so with a mighty fortress is our God.
Thank you, Ricardo. That was really wonderful. All your hard work really shows. <laughs> so please stand for the reading of the gospel if you're able. Today's gospel reading is from Matthew 11, 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Whoops, sorry, it wasn't me. <laughs> this is just to test you to see if you're awake or not, right? I, I asked you the, at the beginning of the service, how many of you feel rested this morning? You know, how, yeah, how many of you feel rested most mornings? <laughs> very few and, you know and Jesus talks about rest in this passage for this morning not, to, not just about physical or mental rest he's talking about a, a more important rest a deeper deeper rest uh, rest for your spirit rest for your soul and such promise is contained in these verses I mean who among us you know, hasn't wanted to find rest from all the weariness and stress we carry from the pains and strifes, uh, strife of this world. Who doesn't want an easier life? And the, the promise is amazing. Yeah, God in uh, Jesus will give us rest, but there is a catch. If we want this rest, we first need to surrender and link ourselves to Jesus Christ. It's not simply a question of walking alongside him, but physically binding ourselves to him so that we may, he may direct us, lead us, and encourage us. You see, uh, you see me uh, every Sunday wearing my robe, um, and my stole. This is a stole, like a scarf-like thing, stole. And um, uh, this stole is placed around our necks, necks and symbolizes at our ordination that we have responded to Christ's call on our lives to serve Christ and God's church, Christ's church and people. And we choose to surrender our lives to Christ's gentle and gentle rule and try to live out the values of his kingdom, calling others to share in the good news as we go. The stole uh, represents the yoke. You know, a yoke is a beam of wood placed uh, over a cow's or a horse's shoulders to which machinery or other heavy objects may be attached, by which Christ directs us, steers us, and even makes us do things we otherwise wouldn't. We are told that it is easy and light, and at times it is. 
But at other times, it pinches or presses down and can really feel like a 20-ton truck, you know, has been strapped to our backs and we're being asked to pull it up a hill. There have been certainly uh, times when I have questioned whether Jesus was telling the truth as he hasn't always, and he hasn't always felt like it, you know. But then miraculously, things start to improve and the load lightens. And then when I look back, I realize, I realize something. I wasn't just yoked to Christ but I was yoked to all manner of things, all trying to pull me in different directions. And so I wonder, if we want this uh, easy burden, this rest, what yokes currently bind us and make, a, and make our lives more complicated than they ought to? To what or to whom are we yoked? To what or to whom do we give ourselves? What or who takes priority in our lives? Orienting um, how we live and relate to others, how we make decisions. We all tie our lives to something, to another person, to work, to family, success, reputation, status, you name it. And sometimes our yokes are more inward, like, like fears, stress, anxiety, anger, partic particular beliefs and opinions, and losses and tragedies of our lives. So think for a moment about the heavy loads that you carry. And let me ask you this, to what or whom do you turn when you are weary, when you are burdened, when you are stressed? To what do you turn when you are weary, when you are burdened or stressed? Too often we treat our weariness and medicate our burdens with addictions. You know, a new toy, a holiday, an afternoon nap, a day off, business, perfectionism. The thing is, inward voids cannot be filled with by, by exterior things. More often than not, we are just as weary and just as burdened afterwards as we were before. These are not the antidote to, antidote to our exhaustion, to our stress. The antidote to our exhaustion begins with wholeheartedness. And that wholeheartedness is only found in sharing the yoke of Christ, the heart of God and the heart of humanity beating as one. And quite often at bedtime, you know, I remember at bedtime, my daughter would be so tired, so exhausted that she would misbehave. She could barely keep her eyes open, and yet she refused to lay down and rest. And you also know, I'm sure, that it's not just my daughter who, uh, who is like this. You know, it happens at every age and in every generation. And Jesus is like the loving parent, you know, looking at his children saying, you are like exhausted children, so tired, you do not wish, you know, and is up so weary and, and burdened that you misbehave. It doesn't have to be like this. Take my yoke upon you. And to take the yoke of Jesus is to take on his life. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, he says. 
Let your heart love, love, love like mine. Let your mind be filled with the same concerns of mine. Let your feet walk and step with mine. Let your hands touch the world like mine. Let your eyes see the Father like mine. Live and move in tandem with me as one, and you will find rest for your soul. So today, we are invited to look afresh at our lives and, and determine, determine that which is important and that which is not. You know, to choose a path that is different to that which we, the world offers. Come to me, says Jesus. Cast, cast your anxieties on me, for I care for you. See Peter 5.7. Trust in me with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, five, he says. And you, if you do that, you will find rest for your souls. Because in reality, Jesus is the one answer to every question, concern, fear, and need we will ever have. No. Our burdened souls only truly find rest in one place. In one place. Are you ready to be yoked with Christ? Are you ready to walk as he walked? Because remember, in losing our lives, we will find it. And by giving ourselves, the, the last shall be first. Don't lose sight of what is ahead, you know, what the goal is, what the promise is. Are you ready? I invite you now to repeat with me, if you, if you want, if you desire, so desire, uh, Psalm 62. Verses 5 to 7. And if you would like, uh, repeat after me. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. Mighty rock, my refuge is God. So today we are invited to look afresh at our lives and determine that which is important and that which is not. To choose a path that is different to that which the world offers. How will you choose? Amen. <clears throat> and uh, today, as I said at the beginning, we have the privilege of celebrating the baptism of um, Evelyn Grace Dickey. And I invite... Uh, her parents to come up to the front and the whole family hey we have room for everyone here for you to uh, be a witness to what God is doing in our lives and as they come <clears throat> I'm gonna ask uh, Kimberly to and and, and Brian of course to introduce your families come don't be shy come over here come be, come behind Come, come, Hi. Come, come. <laughs> good morning, everyone. <laughs> yes, good morning, so Evelyn. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, yeah, she is uh, excited. We, we might about need it. an exorcism. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's excited. <laughs> uh, I'd like to introduce um, Brian's parents, uh, Albert and Ellen Dickey, uh, my sister Nikki, um, her children Lorelai and Bronco, her husband Richie, my brother Eric, and my parents uh, John and Kathy. Yes, amen. Yeah, you're ready. Amen yeah. to that. 
She said, let me translate that. She's saying, I am ready for this. You know, I am ready. All right. <laughs> All right. And look at that picture. Isn't that a beautiful picture? So, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of holy baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. We present Evelyn Grace, Grace Dickey, Dickey to, to receive, receive the, the sacrament, sacrament of holy, holy baptism. baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? We do. Wait. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? We do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord? In union with the, the church which Christ has opened to peoples of all ages, nations, and races. We do. we do. Will you nurture Evelyn Grace in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? We will. To you, brothers and sisters, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? <laughs> Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care? With God's help, we will grace with a community of love and forgiveness. As she may grow in her service to others, we will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Let us pray. <laughs> Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you sent in the clouds and rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurture in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and enabling grace who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life that dying and being raised with Christ she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through Jesus Christ, whom, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Evelyn Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Members of the household of God, I commend Evelyn Grace to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, to confirm her hope and perfect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love, as members of the family of God, and as members of the body of Christ, and in the congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the mysteries of our prayers, 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 our
And we will have a reading of the baptismal verse that the family has chosen for today. And I invite Nicole to read it. Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hello. Okay. <laughs> and to celebrate this uh, great occasion also, we have a baptismal uh, candle and invite him to light it. And I invite you uh, to sing with me all together uh, the song response. invite you all to come together, please come together, and if you can place your hand on Evelyn Grace's head, uh, if not, just put your hand up. <laughs> Evelyn, Evelyn, hey, hey, hello. <laughs> Evelyn Grace, the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. All right. We are done with this, right? We did it. We did it. Congratulations. And we welcome Evelyn Grace with a round of applause. And we also have some gifts for them. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. And... We continue, uh, Kimberly and Brian, we continue to be uh, a church, a place to belong, a family where you can uh, count on us to help you raise Evelyn Grace in love and grace and mercy. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for being here with us. God bless you. I'm sure Evelyn Grace, you know, uh, is warm. I'm, I'm warm. And you notice that when we apply the water on her head, she calmed down. And probably she could stay on, on that phone for the whole day and enjoy it. And so that would be great. And probably we will do, many of us will do so uh, this afternoon, probably at the swimming pool. And now I invite you to stand as we uh, sing the closing hymn, Trust and Obey.
The Bible says there is no rest for the wicked. Isaiah 57, 20. But also it says that there is no rest for those who are outside Christ. Outside of Christ. We can only find rest for our souls when we come to God through Jesus. The invitation is always open to all whom, who will humble themselves before God and come trusting in Jesus. Come to Jesus and learn from God. Come to Jesus and know the Father. Come to Jesus and find rest for your soul. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated and you can enjoy this moment of pause that Ricardo will play for us. Mm -hmm. 